Hello, my name is Spencer, and this is a review of Roll for Adventure. Now, according to the game's description, the old kingdom is in danger. Which old kingdom? I don't know, but it's old. Probably older than Tom Vassal. See, there's this lord, and he's a dark lord. How dark is he? I don't know. Well, probably darker than Tom Vassal. Although this dark lord is commanding a bunch of enemy armies made up of all sorts of dangerous monsters with the hope of spreading darkness across that old kingdom. Despite that ambiguity, players must band together to collect pieces of a magical amulet if they want to save the empire, which they do. So how does all this drivel translate to gameplay? Well, I'm glad I asked. Let's take a look. In Roll for Adventure, two to four players work cooperatively to complete various tasks around the Old Kingdom to retrieve pieces of the amulet. Right here. There are four locations, one, two, three, four, and three of which offer opportunities to collect the pieces of the amulet. The fourth location, the Ice Cave, offers bonuses and benefits to help players with their objectives. To win the game, players will need to fill up the spaces on one of these adventure boards of varying difficulty before one of the locations is completely destroyed by the Master of Shadows and the Monsters. Which could be a good band name, it would probably be a heavy metal band. I don't know, it might be too long. But I digress. Now on their turn, players will roll their dice. Then they will choose a number of the dice that they just rolled. So in this example, I rolled all different numbers, so it wouldn't really be helpful. But if I had rolled two sixes, I would choose the number six, and I would place those two dice at the same location. I can't split them up, they have to go in the same location. And so let's say I put them on this task over here. Now I'm gonna roll what I have left. And I got two four, so I'm gonna put them at this location. And I've got one left. Roll. So you see how that goes. Once you do that, you re-roll everything you didn't use. And you'll repeat that until you use all of your dice. Now, each location has a different way to place the dice. So in the forest, you need to put five or sixes as you continue down this path. As soon as you fill up here to this barrier, it resets and the barrier moves over here, make it even longer and then even longer. Each time you reach the barrier and you see this symbol, you get a gem that goes over here to the adventure card. Over here you've got three groups that you need four dice of a certain number, uh, fours, threes, and twos. Once each one is complete, you remove a barrier, and once all barriers are complete, you get a stone to come over here and fill up on this card. At the desert, you need to fill in this column with ones, so as soon as this column has three ones, all of those will shift over only one, actually one of, only one of them will shift over, the rest are reset. And then you do that three more times, and then once that's over, you lose one die forever. But each time that happens, you get a gem. Finally, at the Ice Caves, this is a place you go to get some bonuses. Um, once you fill up at least four, you, everybody gets a bonus die, at least everybody that helped with this location. Then the next bonus would be to remove a monster whenever that gets out. And then finally, the one thing is to help heal a single location. At the end of a player's turn, a monster comes out and either will remove dice that were already there. So let's say I drew this white wolf. If there were dice at this location, it would be removed. But if there were no dice there, the, the location is damaged. And that's denoted by moving this skull down this track. Players can now place dice on monsters to defeat them with a total of six. So later on, um, if, if I rolled some numbers with blue, I could put some there. If I only rolled a three, someone could come along and put a three, and then the monster would be defeated. Now, as I mentioned, the only way to remove this damage that you would get on one of these tracks is by coming over here to the ice caves and put six total dice on here um, through the collaboration of everybody uh, throughout their turns. Now, each time a monster comes out of a higher rank, let me see if I can find one here. All right, well, here comes the Cave Trolls. Now, Cave Troll is a two. It will cause all ones arrest on the rest of the board to attack at the same time. So you really want to keep the number of monsters down as best as you can. Now, when the Master of Shadows comes out, ooh, bad things happen. He'll cause all monsters that are currently out to attack, and then he'll roll, make you roll the Territory Die, which, when that comes out, causes you to, to do two damage to the location rolled, or you can do one to every location if you roll this face. If you get really lucky though, you'll get a blank side and nothing will happen. Our players can make the game more difficult by adding one or more types of extra monsters. So you've got dragons, phantoms, and giants, which again, each will make the game more difficult. But again, the game is only one if players can collectively work together to resolve each of these locations and get enough gems to fill up the adventure board. I'm gonna roll back over to this camera for a breakdown of the game. 
If you've never seen any of my reviews before, here's the breakdown. I go over the production quality, the mechanisms, the theme, how it feels, and who the game's for. So let's start with production quality. The game is made of some pretty traditional cardboard, and the cards themselves are kind of thin. Um, they're a little hard to shuffle, actually, because of how thin they are, but, you know, nothing that's going to trip you up. Um, you still can get the cards shuffled. Just thought I'd comment on that. Now, um, other than just pretty generic, traditional cardboard, one thing that does stand out to me are the skulls that you use to track the damage at each location. Those are really cool! Um, I don't know what they're made out of, but they're... They're clickety, and what I mean by clickety is when you drop them on a table, it goes clickety. <laughs> um, but I love them. Those are really cool. And then the dice. I like that they're not just solid color dice. They're a little swirly, and um, that big, that big territory die is really cool. I like how big it is, and it's impactful when you roll it. Um, but that's about it on the component quality. Now some quick highlights on the mechanisms. Now first of all, the, the dice rolling is like a different take on the Yahtzee style. Um, you've got, you're, you're rolling the dice you have, of all the same number, and I like that, that you've got several options here, and you've got to pick what's the best for the particular situation. Um, do you go with, it's not very efficient to go with one number and put it at a single location, but that might be what you need at that moment in time. Whereas if you roll three or, three or four of the same number, that's great. You could be really efficient, but you may not need them. So I like having that decision of, do I choose one and be less efficient, or do I have the possibility of using this large number of dice that I've rolled somewhere else entirely? Then looking at how many dice you have left over after you place those dice to be able to re-roll also goes into your decisions. What are the odds that I'm going to get the number that I need for, say, the forest location? What are the odds that I'm going to get a 5 or a 6? Another challenging thing that you have to work around is the dice getting locked up on those locations. So as you place your dice down on any of the various the, the little puzzles of each location, they're locked up. You can't get them back until those those puzzles are complete. And so you have to make that decision of, do I go ahead and place these down knowing that um, they may be locked up for a while, or do I save them and go somewhere else? And in addition to getting locked up, you do have those moments where your dice will be lost completely to the vortex of oblivion uh, whenever the monsters attack and take away those dice whenever they do their damage. But, so you have that challenge of all these dice have, are locked up either on puzzles or in the vortex of oblivion and you're sometimes left with no dice, which can be difficult. And so another part of the challenge is, is using the Vortex of Resurrection to uh, get your dice back. And that's another location that you can go to and more, more that adds to the puzzle of where to place my dice more fit most efficiently. I enjoy that each person has a special ability that will help. Um, some are very, very helpful and some aren't as much. One, one of my favorites is the, the ability that lets you Re, uh, retrieve one die from the vortex of oblivion each turn. That's super helpful. And then if you com combine that with the other with the other ability that um, lets you put one die into the vortex of oblivion to change another die into anything, that's a really powerful combination. Of course, if you're handing those out randomly, you, your odds of doing that are, are very slim. But if you can get those two rolls, and if you do decide to choose the rolls, I would choose to go with those two and because they, they work so well together. As I played the game, it started to feel familiar. And you may not see this, but I do. It, it feels like Shadows Over Camelot. Um, there is no traitor, of course, but in Shadows Over Camelot, you're going around Camelot and you've got different, different uh, locations where you're trying to solve different challenges or whatever, and you're doing that with your cards, you know. You may need a run or a, a full house or something like that, different types of card pairings. While you're doing that, the same thing here, you're going to different locations and putting your dice down in different ways that... Um, help move the, the, the progress along on each challenge. And so I just saw that that uh, comparison and I think that, well, maybe if you like that thing about Shadows Over Camelot, you might like Roll for Adventure. Theme. Let's talk about theme. Now in Roll for Adventure, it's pretty generic. You know, the game, you're just really are just rolling dice. So you don't feel that immersed in the, in the theme of the game itself. You can feel immersed in the game, you know, you're paying attention, you're enjoying what's happening, but as far as thematically, I feel like it could be anything, pretty much any other theme um, would, would fit and you could make it work. But that doesn't mean it's, it's not fun. Overall though, the theme works.
When I play Roll for Adventure, I have a lot of feelings. First of all, there's a lot of tension. You know, when you roll those dice, am I going to get what I need? Um, we are so in such bad shape over here in this location. We've got so much damage. Um, we've got to put dice over here or else we're going to lose this location. And then, of course, when you roll, am I going to get the dice that I need to put over here in this location? If you go to the ice cave, um, will you get what you need to um, receive or uh, revive or retract or <laughs> reverse the damage? There you go. Reverse the damage done on one of the locations. When that happens, that's great. And there are so many stand up and cheer moments in this game, or there can be. If you roll just what you need at the last minute, you stand up and cheer. Yeah, we did it. At least that's how I envision it and uh, um, have done. Um, and so that, that invokes a lot of excitement at the game um, whenever you play. There's, there's a lot of, of that, like I said, tension, but excitement too. But there's also some frustration when it comes down to rolling your dice, as there is with many dice rolling games. You're not rolling what you need. Um, and of course, in many cases, depending on, depending on the rolls that you get, there's not much you can do about it. You just have to do the best with what you got. And um, that's that's part of the part of the game. So there's a good mix of emotions there, and I like games that do that, where you have your ups and your downs. And this one definitely does that. And overall, I'd say it's a positive experience. Do you hate leaving your games up to chance? If so, stay away. Everything in this game is based on your dice rolls. Now you can be strategic about when and how you place them. So there's that strategy there. But ultimately, it's all up to the rolls and how the monsters come out. So if you are really bad at a location, you've already got a couple monsters there. You know, if you've got the card shuffled, when a monster comes out and it's that same location, there you've got some bad luck too. Um, but then when your dice come out, do you have what you need to defeat those monsters? If not, well then you might be angry. So if, if dice rolling is not for you, you're not going to enjoy this game. Now, do you love cooperative games? If so, this one's for you. Um, you really do uh, get to work together on this one. However, there is the potential of alpha gaming, so keep that in mind. There is, if you've got one person that's trying to make all the decisions, say, hey, no, I want to make my own decisions, thank you very much. And um, just, it, just know that going into it, that it is a cooperative game and does have the potential, but if you do like cooperative games and working, working together, I think you'll enjoy this one. Now, as for the age is concerned, it's, on the box it says ages 10 and up, and I think that's pretty accurate. Though my seven-year-old daughter can play with a little help uh, making those decisions because it is cooperative, that helps. Um, so I think it, with a little bit younger than, than 10, if they've got help, you're all working together, maybe as a family or with a group of friends, um, you should be able to enjoy that and not have too, too much of a difficult time uh, playing it. Now, I'd say it's pretty lightweight, an entry-level game, so you shouldn't have any problem introducing it to newer gamers as well. With all of that said, I do think this game is for me. I'm not wowed by it, but I certainly enjoy it, and I think many others will as well. And so, I award Roll for Adventure with a seal of approval. It's a fun dice-rolling cooperative game, albeit with a generic and thin theme. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and want to see other types of content produced by me, check out my own YouTube channel, The Lighten Up Initiative. It's where I publish content that I hope helps gamers remember not to take the board game hobby too seriously. And, well, to just lighten up.